I have here on the bench this KitchenAid Professional 6 quart lift stand kitchen mixer. It has an electrical problem. It doesn't work in any of these settings. Nothing seems to work. You might be able to fix yours like I fixed this under 5 minutes for about $32 plus tax. Let me tell you how it's done. All you need is a screwdriver, Phillips number 2, and uh, a piece, two pieces of wire which I found in this form. Repair starts at removing this band which is held in place by a single screw here at the back. There, that one. And then we can remove the lid and access the electrical components. So let me put you on the tripod here and I'll walk you through this real fast. There, I have it. Alright. This when this band comes off it it's gonna look like so, except that this will be extremely dirty. Depending on uh, depending on usage it's likely that it be dirty. Also it's gonna be very dirty here everywhere under the belt. Okay so cleanup time is not counted in my five minute quote. It's been taken apart and extensively cleaned everywhere. Next thing to remove is four screws. Two are located on this side and two mirror opposite on the other side. Out of these four screws I've removed three so you don't have to watch me undo screws. I'll just take out this last one here and there we go. Now the lid comes off and the electrical components are all plugged into this circuit board. This circuit board and this switch on it, slider switch, mounts with two screws. One is located here on this side of the circuit board, the other one is here. I have taken that one out already, so I'm just taking out this last screw here and I'll show you how the electrical connections look like. There are five things plugged into this circuit board. The first one is this grey flat wire that unplugs, it goes into this 3 pin connector, very straightforward, it only fits there and uh, after that you've got two wires that connect the motor, these two, both of them are black and on the new one it doesn't matter, on the new circuit board, it doesn't matter which one of these wires is connected to which point on the circuit board. Then the other two uh, wires that you have, one black one line, is coming out from the cord. Let me just unplug this thing for safety. There. These, actually from the cord, three wires are coming out. One is green for grounding in North American electrical color coding schemes. So green is bonded to the uh, frame of the machine and the white is neutral and the black one is line, labeled as line on the replacement circuit board. I have a replacement circuit board here but before I purchased the replacement circuit board for $32 I tested the motor to see if it runs. Fairly straightforward. Connect the black one with a piece of wire that jumps the gap and connect the white one to the two terminals of the motor just like so and like I said it doesn't matter which terminal on the motor is connected to the uh, line and which terminal on the motor is connected to the neutral there just like so just connect the motor to see if the motor runs so now I need to plug it in carefully and let's see good it works let's just see it again good Alrighty, so the motor is flawless. What I needed, what I need to do now is I have this new circuit board and if I compare the new one on the left side with the old one on the right side, the differences, you can, you can see there's a couple of differences, the number of electrical components is being significantly reduced by about half. 
the components that are the same is this big round rectangle it's a big capacitor that's the same there the heat sink around the uh, uh, tra uh, transformer there not transformer sorry transistor how bad transistor there heat sink transistor heat sink big black capacitor tower capacitor there and there so those are the same items but this long rectangular item is entirely missing from there and there's a whole bunch of little resistors and little capacitors that are just not on the new one so the new circuit board has been redesigned and optimized and upgraded so there are fewer components that go wrong on it however I still think that the only moving component will be the faulty one this long rectangle here inside is a potentiometer or a, a variable resistor along which this slider slides and uh, this one selects uh, stir 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 okay so those settings would correspond to various levels of resistance in another video I will try to isolate which part on this old circuit board is the faulty one because it may not um, because you may not need to spend $32 you may only need to replace one item for maybe $2 the one faulty item on this circuit board another video so on the new circuit board you have fewer components and you'll find the following terminals and the following labels this one says line that's where you connect this black line the next one says oh no it doesn't reach okay the next one says neutral so that's where the white goes and then you have motor 2 and motor 1 and like I said it doesn't matter where you connect which end coming from the motor it's gonna work either way it's not possible the circuit board has been designed in a way that it's not possible to have the motor run counterclockwise it's always running clockwise okay and don't forget to connect this gray wire as well to this three pin terminal there and put two screws in it I just put one in because it makes the video shorter just give me a second here thereabouts set it to zero and plug it in and power it up and let's see what we did I say that's a flawless repair and uh, uh, all the speeds work all the speeds work so that's really all it takes to repair this one if your motor is not burnt out so I don't know if the uh, the uh, department that uh, fixes these items uh, at the place where this was written off I don't know if they try this or and it's not that uh, you have to try hard you just have to try it basically but I don't know if they even tried it so that's how this repair is done under five minutes for $32